We're going to recap TNA, the pay-per-view horror justice. I don't know if you did that on purpose or not, but it was funny either way. Huh. I'm glad you were entertained. TNA, I, I have a feeling, judging from Vince's violent reactions, which are unacceptable, have uh, brought him great sadness. It brought me great rage. Vince, you have to stop wish... hitting the floor, though. If you if you put a hole in my floor underneath the... And I have to tear out the carpet to repair it, it's going to come out of your ass. I don't blame you. So don't break anything. I, TNA drives me to, to anger. Well, uh, it drives me to a point where I, I have to break something. <laughs> now, listen. That's your own problem. Yes. Okay. As long as we got that, that straight. Yeah. TNA brings me to rage, too, but I don't break anything. I don't... Well, you... you, you, I mean, you, you violent you, acts... You have a better way of channeling your anger. I, 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 I have a better gonna... way of channeling my inner peace. <laughs> yes. yes. People are probably not expecting me to have a great round on the show. I, I can't do it. I, I'm emotionally drained. I, I, I snapped about 40 minutes into the pay-per-view tonight, maybe a little longer. If I would have had a pellet gun, I would have shot you. I, I was a little worried that you were going to well, escape. I was not. I was slapping the floor with my hand. With my palms. The odds of me actually damaging your carpet in any way are very, very slim. I may have popped a blood vessel. I'm not sure. It, it hurt bad. But I, I, I get... I you, know, you know what's funny? You know what's funny about this, this there was rage? Nothing, there was nothing to kill, so I had to hit something. You know what's funny about this rage that you had about this pay-per-view? What's funny is that there's a lot of stuff about TNA that is really bad. A lot of stuff that sucks... Massively. However, if you take all of the shit out that really sucked, this was actually a pretty damn good pay-per-view, all things considered. I suspect you are right. You were blinded by your rage. That's the exact word, blinded. Now listen, everybody. And the, the funny thing is, by the way, I went into this with low expectations. Usually when you go into something with low expectations, you're surprised at how good it is and you enjoy it. No. I went in with low expectations and it is soared beneath them. Wow. Yes. This is actually a, a pretty good show. I, I will start off with some heavy criticisms. First off, as mentioned many times, the, the booking actually on the show was, was fine for the most part, but still, these bookers need to be replaced immediately. And killed. One good show. <laughs> Jesus Christ. One good show out of, uh, out of eight in the last two months, unacceptable. That's, that's a, that is a blow F. If we were in school right now, it is well below fifty uh, percent or whatever an F is. So failure. These people need to re be replaced. The director of this show, David Sahadi. Oh, that motherfucker! I realize that David Sahadi in WWE did some fantastic stuff, and even even early on in TNA, he did some fantastic stuff. No longer fantastic. It's it's the same. It's it's the exact same video package. For every match on every show, a a deep-voiced James Earl Jones impersonator trying to make matches that we know suck uh, sound more important than they actually are. And worst of all, he's the director of this show, and as mentioned many times, I've never seen a worse director, and I've worked on student films, so I've, I've been around a lot of first-time directors. He's worse than all of them. I've never seen anyone so bad. Let me tell you how bad he, he is. the one who set me off. He not only missed the finish of the Pac-Man Jones match. Yes. When Pac-Man Jones got the pin on Sting, and this was the shot that was supposed to end up on SportsCenter, he missed it. Yes. He was elsewhere. He also happened to miss the finish of the main event. When it was tapped out clean, he was elsewhere. You piece of shit. Quit your job. Have some pride. Acknowledge you suck and quit. Go home. Leave the business forever. He directs this shit like he's never watched this thing before. He's been doing it for like eight years. The, the one man will grab his opponent and lift him up for a move, and he will cut to a close-up, thinking perhaps they will strike a pose there for eight to ten seconds. No, you motherfucker! When he lifts the guy up, he's going to slam him back down, perhaps onto his head, and we missed it! Yeah, we didn't miss a good pile driver. Yeah! There, okay. there, was, a, there was a spot... We'll get to it, but... When I was a little kid, when I was like uh, 12, 13 years old, I actually had some wrestling figures, believe it or not, in a little ring... And I would have them do these these wacky. I would make up moves that they could do, and I actually invented a move which was before its time, where you'd lift a man up onto his. It was like a kryptonite crunch, except he'd just be, you know, it, he would be his legs would be around. This is, sounds horrible. 
I was 13. Come on now. His uh, legs were around... It's okay to be gay. <laughs> legs were around your head, but his, his torso was going down your back, so his head so was... He was his, his face was where, Brian? His head was at your ass. Correct. But at that point, you sat down and drove his head into the, the, the canvas. Yes. And I thought, sweet Christ, what a devastating move. And it was years before I actually saw that move in pro wrestling. Well, somebody did that move tonight. He had the man set up in the position to deliver this horrifying pile driver, and the uh, director decided he was going to cut to a shot of Tracy Brooks and missed it. Yes. He, he missed it. He missed the move. He uh, constantly is going from shot to shot to shot to shot to shot. We've talked many times about the issue of immediately cutting backstage after a big win, which didn't see a lot of on this show, but it's been horrible in the past. Horrible. Horrible. No redeeming qualities at this point for this uh, David Sahadi. He needs to be released from his contract. He needs to be sent to WWE in, a, in an effort by uh, TNA to sabotage their uh, main competitor. He needs to be eradicated from the wrestling business. He ruined this pay-per-view in many ways. You know, about two, three months ago, we were at the bowling alley, and our friend John at, asked, just to strike conversation, what celebrity would you like to fight? <laughs> or would you like to kill one of the two? And I couldn't think of anyone. I, I couldn't think of one famous person I, I really had a beef with who I wanted to, to, to do combat with. Then for a while, my answer was Michael Bay, who I actually like his movies, but he himself is a giant douche. And now my answer is most definitely David Sahadi. I want to fight him. If we can book that match, we'll I, I, And you know what? If he kicks my ass, fine. <laughs> I just want one chance to get my hands on him. We'll, we'll get you training if this match can be made. Uh, an MMA fight. I actually would train. Between you and David Sahadi. I think that'd be money. I'd pay for it. Sure. I would pay for that fight right there. I, I would rather go down screaming than... I, I, I would rather get my ass kicked by him than live my life without the chance to hit him. And if David Sahadi won, I'd immediately shut the tape off so that he couldn't see a celebration afterwards. And you'd go he, to the, you would go to the back. He utterly sucks. I've never seen a worse a worse director in my whole entire life. This was such shit on this show. So anyway, that was a big problem. Yeah, fuck the, you. The announcers gotta go. God bless Mike Tanay. God bless Don West. They suck. Yes, Especially they, they do. They do. if I see one more interview where a guy's talking and they're telling us what he's saying as he's saying it, I'll shoot my TV out. Yes. And uh, Don West, in particular, he, he used to have a kind of a kitschy charm as the, the guy who doesn't know anything about wrestling, calling wrestling. After five years, he's just a bad announcer. He's just a shitty announcer who, 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 who when, when I think it was Abyss was climbing into the ring and Kurt kicked the rope into his nuts and West says, oh, he's kicked him in the ankle. <laughs> no, he didn't. Yes. He didn't kick his ankle. I was watching. I know what happened. This was the oldest heel trick in the book. Samoa Joe tried to get into the ring. And as he was stepping between the, the middle rope and the top rope, Christian kicked the rope right up into the, you, Joe, I'm sorry. the penis of Samoa Joe. And Don West said, I think he clipped his ankle. Idiot. No, he did not. He also was talking about the, the uh, knee joint of, of Abyss being worked on. By... He said Abyss's knee. The knee had been yanked out of the socket. Out of the socket. The knee was pulled out of the socket. So we now know that Don West knows nothing about pro wrestling or anatomy. This was bad stuff, and and really, if you if you if you remove the announcers, and you remove the director, and you remove some of the bullshit booking, some of the shitty finishes. We saw a couple of shitty finishes on this show. The wrestling was was actually really good, pretty much up and down the show, with a couple of exceptions, which we'll get into. But, yes, if you're a fan of wrestling, what the hell? Get this show. If you're a very, very, I don't know what the word is. Uh, if you have a, a great ability to filter out the bad from the good, you may have enjoyed this. Yes, if, if TNAs, it's like, a, it's like a, a marriage when it falls apart. It's the little things. It's not your wife cheating on you with the postman. It's her not putting her glass away after she's done drinking it or something stupid like that. If you can handle the little things, then this pay-per-view is uh, for you. If you can't handle the little things, might as well uh, find another one. If you can use your imagination, for example, if, you hear, if you're looking at Tracy and you hear a loud slap of flesh against flesh and you see Tracy reaction, you can imagine, hey, Bobby Roode just hit a chop. Then this is the show for you. Yes. The opener was Sting and Kurt Angle versus Pac-Man Jones and Ron Killings. Actually, I must interrupt you here. <laughs> Pac-Man Jones, of course, is on the show. He is most famous 
for two things. One, crime, two, football. So the uh, also the, this pay-per-view aired on the uh, opening Sunday of the NFL season, which is I know it's not a big deal for you, but it's a big deal to a lot of people. So the opening package of this show uh, showed a football field, and they played the Monday Night Football theme. They asked us if we were ready for some wrestling, and then they showed a bunch of wrestling packages as if guys were playing football. And basically this served to remind football fans who may have tuned in to see Pac-Man that they were, in fact, missing a game to watch this fucking show. Yeah. Stupid. Oh. Fucking stupid. <laughs> Alrighty then. Steve Kern Angle versus Pac-Man and Ron Killings for the TNA Tag Team titles. You'll recall that Jim Cornette said he knew what Pac-Man's contract stipulated, but it was never made clear. There were rumors that on the Sunday pay-per-view when Pac-Man debuted, it was said that he could not wrestle or something. I don't know. I never heard this, but this is what people claimed. So anyway, he did this match, and they never explained whether he could wrestle or not. He just didn't. He refused to get in the ring. Ron Killings worked the entire match. He finally made a hot tag about three minutes into the match. Um, I should note that that Karen Angle came out, and um, I don't even know how to explain all of this uh, about what happened. Basically, Pac-Man pinned Sting. <laughs> we'll cut to the chase. Now, here's, here's, here's what happened. Karen was out, and Sting told her to go away. And then the ref told her to go away. She didn't go away. So, hell of a ref, by the way. So then she started yelling at Sting, and he made a gesture for her to please leave. And she took a bump as if he had slapped her. And this caused Angle to go tend to her. And then Sting got in the ring and was going to face off with Pac-Man. But then Angle came back in and gave him the Olympic slam because he'd not hit his wife, but Angle thought he had. And then Pac-Man pinned him. So the question is, why? Why did Karen lie to her husband? Well, why did Karen pretend like Sting hit her? I don't know. I thought she spent the entire last show trying to talk Sting into being Angle's friend so that they could be tag team partners. I thought so as well. So what we had was a blatant bait and switch in a tag title match that went four minutes made absolutely no sense whatsoever, and I guess that's it. And they missed the pin. And they missed the finish, that's right. A failure on every level. This was a fucking disaster of a segment. This, and, and keep in this mind, was sucked. this was Pac-Man's wrestling debut. It was the opener, in this match, bereft of logic, in this match that had something that made absolutely no sense, and a, a, a pin that was missed, and I paid... Thirty nine or twenty nine ninety five for it. This was offensive to me. Yeah, it should have been. You should be pissed. This is such bullshit. They make us watch. It is. It, it, it's an assault to us <laughs> that we have to endure their program. It is a form of rape. That's a little strong. Can you rape the eyeballs? They, they, I, I feel like my eyes have been raped. They rape my soul and my wallet. And yeah, they rape your wallet definitely. But yes, and. and I don't know. I just don't know. This was Sting, shit. Sting waves his arm. I still want to know why Karen took a phantom bump. <laughs> Karen took a phantom bump. And, and basically cost her husband the title. Yes, Karen screwed her husband and Sting for the tag titles, which they both fought so hard to win. And which she had convinced Sting to help her husband <laughs> become Sting champion. Sting to help her husband defend them. And Angle, no one ever explained to Angle, your wife's a bitch, she's lying. <laughs> no, they did. Watch the tape. They did, but he didn't believe her. This is coming up later. But, but... The best part of all this was we mentioned the announcers need to go. Sting waved his arm. Karen took this big dramatic bump. Don West said, Sting hit her! <laughs> Don West, you fuckwad. Sting didn't hit her. No one on earth thinks Sting hit her except Kurt Angle and you. You should also quit. I, I go am, back to the baseball cards, fat ass. I am slightly entertained by the character of Don West, who is the dumbest man in the world. He is. He is a retard. That's no, you know what? That's not fair. That's seriously. I've seen retards with drool hanging out of their mouth who are way smarter than Don West. That's that's seriously his character, where he's the dumbest guy around. He cannot possibly dress himself. <laughs> no way. He's got to have a crew of like three people helping him. So anyway, anyway carrying him around, carrying him place to place. Borash interviewed Ryan. Beating him who uh, said he wanted to thank James Storm for helping him figure out who Terry Guerin really was. Terry Guerin! His real name! Who could possibly be writing this show? 
Mm. All those times in Puerto Rico where uh, mm. Savio Vega and... and uh, the long history of the Jarrett's scripting promos. That guy's talking about their real name. Oh, yeah. Mm. This was awesome. He said he was going to kill James Storm. Actually, the best part of this was, Borat says, Rhino, where have you been? And Rhino says, it doesn't matter where I've been. <laughs> and then he changed the subject. Thanks for bringing it up then, guys. Thank you for wasting my time with that. I Thank you. We had Terry Guerin and James Storm. They brawl all over the place, and and today ex- explained that Jim Cornette told the ref to show leeway because there was so much bad blood here. Actually, I, I, like, I like most TNA matches, <laughs> the rules are strictly enforced. Yes, <laughs> like there's great grave danger in all of these matches that the ref might throw it out. That's right. Yes, we had chairs, we had tables, we had gimmicks from about three different guys, we had every single imaginable form of bullshit. But somehow this ref had to be more lenient. Right. Yeah. I, I, I will say something positive about this show and about this particular match. Rhino came out. Usually when guys go in the crowd, it's because they have a script, and the script says, let's go brawl in the crowd. And so they just go over, throw each over the rail, and wander around. There's never a good reason to go brawl in the crowd. This one there was. Rhino came out, and he could not find James Storm, because James Storm was trying to hide behind fans. <laughs> and the fans all pointed him out. He's over here. And Rhino came to get him. Yes. So there's, hey, Tina, you did one thing right. So in the middle of the director missing spots and... Nonsense about keeping. Uh... <laughs> there was a great moment here where they were brawling on the ramp and they were fighting over a suplex, and then the camera just cut to a shot in, in the tunnel looking out at nothing. And you couldn't see anything. You couldn't see anything. It was like there was a camera in the tunnel, and David Sadi in the middle of this just goes, Go to the tunnel! Go to the tunnel! Go to the camera right now! And there was and nothing there. Nothing was happening, and then he went back to the ring. And by the way, this isn't occurring to me until right now. The tunnel cam was not used for the rest of the night. No. It was, it was not like a big angle they had planned and, and they just went too early. No. It was never used for anything. They just had a man in the tunnel. <laughs> you must alert the fans that nothing is happening in the tunnel right now. Yes. You shithead. <laughs> if you take out all the bullshit, I gave this three and a quarter stars. There was a lot of good action. They had a, they, they, had they, a, they worked their asses off. They, they, they worked well. The crowd was going absolutely nuts for it. They were just, it was the second match in the show and they did, Nine thousand two point nine counts, and it just, they kicked out of all sorts. They kicked of out of everything in the world. Finishers, diamond cutters off the top rope onto chairs. Yes, <laughs> everything you can imagine. And then, of course, it was just a gore through a table was the pin. So, other than that, it was it was good stuff. And I should note that this affected the next match because nobody gave a shit about anything because they would just seen yes. crowd brawling, tables, chairs. WrestleMania kickouts, violence, and maybe blood. And it was tough to follow that. It, it, they decided could, this would fit great as the second match on the show. Good thinking. Yes. yes. The, the, poor. I have nothing bad to say about Frankie Kazarian and Bobby Roode. Bobby Roode? Well, we're talking about the next, I'm moving on to the next match oh, now. but I'm not. We, just, we didn't finish with Rhino Poirier. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Down Storm's pants. He did, in fact, try to give me a beer enema. <laughs> he uh, gored Jackie. And then they finally had a shot of the finisher of the opener. They replayed that here <laughs> almost three matches in. Then we had a shit backstage with Angle and Sting and Nash and Karen and Cornette, and they were all screaming at the top of their lungs. This is one of those things about TNA that needs to be eradicated immediately. People say, Brian, what should change? I'll tell you right now. Promos with people screaming as loud as they can. It is complete and utter overkill. And Karen Angle screaming at the top of her lungs, and Sting screaming at Angle, and Angle screaming back, and Cornette screaming at everybody, and Kevin Nash screaming. I wanted to turn the channel. It's so... It's... I, I just don't get it. I mean, somebody... Because somebody, there were a bunch of promos like this on the show. Somebody thought yelling loud equals good TV. Mm-hmm. Or yelling loud equals that good That shows angle. the intensity. That's a good promo. He's loud. Yes. Wrong. Yeah. Please stop that immediately. It actually is almost, it's almost worse. Rhino did the thing where he whispers a lot, and then he shouts real mad because now he's angry. And it's like they have this twisted idea of, of, of that, that's what a promo thing is promo supposed to be. Well, no, I think they think that the louder you yell, the more we'll care. Yeah. I really think that. And, and it, that's not how it works. It, 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 
the, the, the Dan Maff promo I watched on Ring of Honor two weeks ago is the same thing. He whispers and whispers, and then he starts shouting, and it's like, it doesn't make you sound cool. It doesn't make you sound tough. It doesn't make you sound passionate. It just makes you sound irritating. Stop it. Quiet down. I think in the middle of this, Karen got sent home. Karen and Sting were sent home from the building. Yay. What piece shit. Kaz versus Robert Roode. Again, if you take out the numerous points in this match where the director was elsewhere, three and a quarter stars I give this little bout. They did a hell of a job. And problem was nobody, I don't think anybody gave Kaz much of a, a chance of winning this match. And it took a long time for them to get into it. And I will say that if it had not been for the Tracy storyline, nobody would have given two fucks about this match. I will say that. With that said, there, the, the concern was so much on what Tracy was thinking that 80% of this match was in the ring and a full 20% was on Tracy. I would say closer to 40%. And at the worst possible times, missing, missing big moves, missing transitions, missing everything just to show Tracy. So, anyway, they... Uh, like I said, early on, nobody really cared. In fact, there were chances of this is boring, even though it was not boring. But this is what happens when a wrestling match follows a, war. a street fight. So they finally got the people into it. And by the time Kaz was doing all his, his high spots at the end, the people were going crazy. And I think they really, really wanted him to win. And then Robert Roode pinned him clean, mind you. The heel pinned him clean with a fisherman suplex. And you could just hear the crowd, the air just went out of the crowd. And, again, it's an example of two wrestlers who are very good, who did a hell of a job, and all the other shit involved in this handicapped them greatly, which is the story of TNA. I, I was trying to say earlier, I have nothing but good things to say to Robert Roode. I have nothing but good things to say about Frankie Kazarian. You guys worked your asses off. It all looked good. You had a really good match, and I really, really bad wish I could have seen it. But apparently you can only see TNA Wrestling if you're actually there in Orlando. Because if you're watching on TV, you can't see anything. Yes. All you can see is you can see empty air where pro wrestlers used to be. You can see extreme close-ups of guys doing moves, but you can't tell what's going on because it's a close-up. Or you can see Tracy at ringside, which is not entirely a negative. But I couldn't watch this goddamn match. Th- this, this was where I flipped out. I, I, it wasn't even... The, the, the funky reverse pile driver thing, that, that kind of cued it off. But there was like eight more shots that were just missed. And I snapped, and I screamed, and I swore, and I slapped the ground. And this is where I gave up on this television show. I could not take any more. I was fed up. I was offended. I was assault, assaulted. I was taking it personally. I was, I was mad at you. I was mad at our listeners. I was mad at TNA fans. I was mad at the world of pro wrestling. I was mad at everyone because... It all led to this moment where I had to sit there and watch this shit, and that was bullshit. That was bullshit. I had done nothing wrong to anybody. So you took it out on my floor? I, your floor will live. I swear, I swear to God, your floor is fine. And if I ever do damage your, your floor, it will suck, but I will cover it. I'm going to get a taser. That's not a horrible idea. I'm going to hold it by <laughs> the not the whole, I don't blame you. Next time you get out of hand, I'll just zap you. That's not the worst plan ever. But I, 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 I don't get it. And maybe I'll <laughs> pour some alcohol down your pants. No. I don't know what that's supposed to do. I don't know, but I, don't want you to, I guarantee you I don't want you to do it. And it was not the stupidest post-match thing, but we'll get to that after a while. So at this point, I, I gave up. I, I threw, a, I threw a, a childish tantrum. You told me to calm down. I thought about it for two seconds. I thought, Jesus Christ, he's right. Getting mad about this won't do any good. I took some deep breathing, and for the rest of this match, I'd all, all, I didn't watch any of the match at all. When the camera cut back to Tracy, which I did often, I just focused on her cleavage. And that's all I watched, and that calmed me down. That's, so, that's, that's the lesson of the day. And we had Nash meeting with Jay Lethal, and we had an interview earlier where a man mentioned his real name. This time we had Nash asking Jay Lethal to do a job. Where have we heard that before? Oh, WCW under uh, Vince Russo. What a shocker. I'm sure somebody else came up with this, though. It's not, it's not Russo's fault, I'm told. But this was. Kurt Angle and Jay Lethal for the X title. This match ruled. God damn, this match was great. It was exactly what you'd expect a Kurt Angle versus Jay Lethal match to be if they told Kurt Angle to go out there and do everything he could to make a man. And it was awesome. It was fucking awesome. They had a 80s style uh, veteran heel versus young babyface. 
And uh, the fans, you know, I, I don't think that they really thought that Jay Lethal had a much of a chance of winning. That They sort of got into it there at the end, and it kind of hurt the heat of the match in that, I think everybody expected just a Kurt Angle squash, but they had a great match. Jay Lethal ran wild. Angle cut him off, beat on him in, in fabulous fashion. And then Jay Lethal made a big comeback, hit 18 million different near falls, and uh, traded near falls back and forth, that sort of thing. And, and finally they went for a cradle spot, and, and Jay Lethal reversed it and pinned Kurt Angle clean. And the place went crazy, and all of the... The young goofs from the X Division ran out and celebrated with Jay Lethal, and it was not the best match of all time or anything like that. It was the best match on this show, and I think that um, this was probably the most fun I have had watching a TNA match in months and months and months and months, and two thumbs up, great men. I couldn't watch this match. I'm not disagreeing with anything you say. I was still too angry. I was still seeing red, and when I tried to watch this, two things, two thoughts crossed my mind. One... I'm going to get into this, and there will be a shitty DQ finish, or somebody will run in, or they will do some other fucked up, and it won't matter. And two, I'll get into this, and the director will cut away to something. I won't be able to sit anyway, so why should I watch? Apparently none of that happened. So I, I, I played with my new phone for a while. I laid there. I stared at the floor. I didn't watch this. I couldn't, I couldn't bring myself to do it. And well, at the times when I did look up at the screen, it seemed like cool stuff was happening. And I thought they, I thought they did a good job in making Lethal's clean win, which obviously got me totally off guard. But they, 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 they made it seem well, they made it seem important, first of all. The fact that all the fact that all the other geeks ran out to party with them. At, at least it was important to the geeks. That's good. <laughs> but it uh yeah. I, 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 I was still emotionally dead at this point and, and recovering. I should command you to go out and watch this match right now. This was the best thing TNA has done in God even knows how long. You're probably right. You are probably right. I they they, they slew me. I, 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 had, I had nothing but hate for pro wrestling at this point. Well, luckily for you, it's on the DVR. Yeah. Add that to your list of things you're going to have to watch. I'll watch tomorrow. Chris Harris and Black Rain had a shitty match. So that all was well on TNA Land. It was bad. I don't know. Chris Harris had a cool dive at the very first move, and then nothing else happened. Everybody knows. They did some crap, and then the crowd chanted, Let's go, Black Rain. It did some crap. And then Harris made a comeback. No one cared. I do I remember the end of this match now. I remember nothing about the match except, match except the dive. And I remember the post-match shenanigans, which were great for bad reasons. The ref uh, was trying to get a gimmick away from Gold Dust, and Harris Small packaged him for the pin. The streak of great matches ended. Harris KO'd him with handcuffs afterwards, a classic babyface move. He handcuffed him to the ring post and he grabbed a chair. He was going to waffle. He was going to, to, to yes, he was going to, to decimate a, a defenseless man like all great heroes. So he went to hit Black Rain with this chair and Black Rain kicked him in the gut. Yes, he was undone by a bound opponent like all great heroes. And then, uh, they made him look like such a tool. Black, oh God! Black Rain had a key. Thankfully, he released himself. He beat up Harris. He <laughs> put a mouse on him. <laughs> he put Mickey on his chest. That is, he had a a little cage a with a a rat a in vermin. it. A rat, and uh, he took the rat out. <laughs> nice. I, this this cannot possibly have been a good idea. <laughs> At no point could he have thought this is going to be cool. We'll put a rat on him. He took the rat out, and he. He didn't, even, he didn't even put it on him. He he rubbed the mouse on Chris Harris for a second, including on his forehead, and everybody, the announcers freaked out. Like, holy shit, a mouse on Chris Harris. Apparently they thought Chris Harris now had the plague. They could have at least said that this was this rat had the plague. Yeah. Instead, it was just a fucking mouse on Chris Harris. Woohoo! They put a cute, soft, furry thing on you. <laughs> Torture! So fucking dumb! This black rain thing is a failure on oh, every God, level. Yes. <laughs> you put a rat on him. <laughs> so we got the best and worst of TNA right in a row. Angle and Lethal, and then God. Harris and Black Rain. Sucked. No, no buys. Then we had Joe doing an interview about how about Christian had attacked his kin. More screaming. He screamed till I wanted to shut off the TV. 
Apparently now this this dancer is like a family member. Weren't you the one who said all Samoans are a family? Well, apparently that's what they think. Apparently every Samoan on the earth is related. Or this was supposed to be like his brother, and they just alerted us. Just added a random family member to the Samoa Joe family tree. Who could possibly give a fuck? He sure said we're protected by nature. Who could have possibly given a fuck about this? I don't know. I didn't. Tag, I didn't give anything. Tag Team Gauntlet. The guys entered one at a time at one-minute intervals. I won't go over the whole thing. But I enjoyed this battle royal. This was a fun battle royal. This was, in fact, I, even I. At this point, I was coming out of the depths. This is the only segment on the show I enjoyed, with this, this battle royal and the ensuing tag match at the end. This was a fun battle royal. A fun battle royal. Everyone worked hard. It was, it was smartly booked, for the most part. Except dumbing Chris Saban in 90 seconds or whatever, but the 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 there there were stories it w- woven but w- in the match. Team 3D teamed up. Uh, Tomko and AJ teamed up for a bit. AJ and Daniels, the old tag team partners, faced off, and it came down to Eric Young, Alex Shelley, and AJ Styles, and they had the best three man finish to a battle royal I ever saw. It was just the 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 heels both wanted to, to align themselves with Eric so they could double team the other guy, and Eric didn't know what to do, so finally they just Double teamed him, and they did a bunch of stuff with Eric going back and forth, teasing almost eliminating him from one, and then they fought on the apron for a while, and finally they just dumped Eric out, and it was great. I also loved Eric Young. He was the number 20 guy. He came out of House of Fire and ran wild with headlocks. Yes. That was awesome. So Alex Shelley and AJ were the last two, so their uh, teammates rejoined them. So we got Alex Shelley and Chris Saban versus Tomko and AJ Styles. I expected a great match. Instead, it was two minutes and the machine guns were running wild, and, like, the best thing on this on this entire show, outside of Angle and Jay Lethal. And what happened? AJ pinned Saban with a cradle holding the tights. There's no glass ceiling in TNA. Bullshit! Yes. There's, so everyone, chance for We Want Shelly long before he came out. It's like, people want to see the machine guns. They want to see them for a long time. Also, like to see him win. People might get into them. Might consider them, you know, stars. No, too they, small. Pay to see them. They're too fucking small. There's no glass ceiling in TNA. Everyone gets a chance. Yeah. Fuck except, you guys. Except these guys. Fans were chanting, "We want Shelly." They were holding up the machine gun sign. They were all excited. They were going crazy whenever they were out there. And of course, they were beaten. Way to go, TNA. So I, good, can't, I cannot wait till this company dies. Good match, though. Three and a quarter stars for the whole little Delia Bob there. Then we had Joe and Christian. <clears throat> this was a hell of a match until a hell of a shitty finish. Joe uh, destroyed the man early, and it was grand. It was a grand Samoa Joe beating. Christian got the heat. It wasn't quite so grand, but it was fine. Joe made a huge comeback, ran wild. Then we had another great announcer faux pas, which was Joe putting on the choke, Christian rolling backwards and hooking his feet on the top ropes, which was the finish if you'll recall, when Christian pinned Samoa Joe to retain the NWA title. Did the announcers make mention of this? No, of course not. It was just another spot in the match. How I remembered that, I have no idea. I was just going to ask you. I did. I had no fucking idea. I I did, but the announcers didn't have any clue. I don't remember Joe and Christian ever wrestling for the title. They had that fucking match, and that was the finish of it. Wow. Jesus Christ, how can I even remember that, and you're an idiot. I don't know. So the announcers were also idiots, so you are, you are now in the boat with Mike Tanay and Don West. How did that feel? I, I will set fire to the boat and we'll all die at sea. So they uh, did that spot, and nobody bothered to make mention of it. And this time the ref caught Christian, and he went for the uh, Joe went for another choke. Christian got the ropes. Joe did not break. The ref was pulling him off by the hair, and so Joe got upset and gave the ref a Samoan drop. Why? I don't know. Doesn't like his hair pulled. You know them Samoans? So, he hit the muscle buster, but of course, no ref. In came all the other geeks. They got beaten up. And uh, it was a DQ, a disqualification in TNA, mind you. So, finally, after Joe had beaten up ten men, Jim Cornette sent in Matt Morgan to tame Samoa Joe. Joe was shoved. Uh, Joe shoved him, spit on him, flipped him off, and uh, that was the end of this whole thing. And I've never seen a guy act more heelish, and I, I bet they're thinking that he's a babyface right now. This was a total heel asshole Samoa Joe, and somehow we're supposed to cheer him. I couldn't get into this. I watched it all. 
didn't particularly enjoy it. I didn't know that the crowd was loving it. And then after a while, it kept going, and there was another near finish and another another tease to a finish. And by the end, the crowd was not as into it as they had been. And then the bullshit at the end happened, and you pretty much you pretty much covered it. I haven't said that in a while. I meant it, but you t- you whatever what happened. But the other, one thing you missed is Matt Morgan has yet to wrestle in DNA. He's just there being tall. And so you would think they're going to use him. He can talk. He's tall. He's got a look. Perhaps if they ever use him to wrestle, he should face men he could beat. Maybe you don't get over. So, of course, they, they would tease a feud with Joe, where, in fact, neither guy could lose because of TNA, and no one ever loses. Uh, two and three-quarter stars would have been better without the shitty finish. Angle freaking out backstage, mad at Sting. Kurt Angle, who's done many interviews and ranted about WWE and how they use profanity and how it's unacceptable to him, called Jay Lethal, and I quote, a piece of shit. And he also told Kevin Ash to go to hell. So, way to go, Kurt Angle. Practice what you preach there, buddy. Now we had today in the ring making the two-hour announcement. I have nothing to say. You've heard it all before. They're going to two hours on October 4th. Just to punish me. They're going to two hours on October 4th. And slow down, everybody. It's going to be slowed down. Now that they've got two hours, they've got plenty of time. They never had time before to fully make use of their vast roster of superstars. But now they're going to have time. Eight hours a month. Not counting oh paper Oh, my God, that way. <laughs> they're going to have eight hours a month. And you know what? They're still going to get a one-two. And I'm going to cry with laughter. <laughs> More importantly... Right now, the way I'm feeling, it's going to be the same shitty TV show. It's going to be the same horrible Duh. pacing. Yeah. Duh! It's, it's, just, it's, it's going to be two, two episodes of Impact back-to-back. Listen, everybody I'm, I'm bringing a book. Everybody okay? you if you're going to make me watch this, I am, I, I, no, no, listen. You often make the claim about how you, when you, you're worried about being in your deathbed and looking back and you don't want to think about time you've wasted in your life. I'm not going to waste my life watching this shitty program. <laughs> you are. I'll bring a newspaper. I'll bring a book. I'll bring an iPod. I don't know. I'll take a nap. I'm not watching two hours of impact every week. You will watch two I'll hours. I'll quit this impact. fucking site and say goodbye to you. Well, that'll Put be the fine room. then. Okay. October fourth will be the last day of Vincent Verhey on the Brian and Vinny show, as uh, apparently he is handing in his resignation. We shall keep all of that in mind. We have the Kurt Angle versus Abyss match for the TNA title, which was a acceptable main event. There's not a whole lot you can do with Abyss. He's big. He's fat. He can't sell very well no. at all. He gets hit in the back of the knee and bumps forward. Angle uh, sold early, did a bunch of comedy, and uh, there's a reason that a pay-per-view with Kurt Angle wrestling three matches has 20,000 buys, because he's a clown. But he's entertaining for the 20,000 people that buy this show. So, anyway, they uh, had this match. It uh, was fine. They, I don't think anybody believed. They did all these near falls at the end, and nobody cared. Because everybody in TNA has been trained to know that no match is going to end without interference. Or some sort of ref bump or some sort of bullshit like that. So what happened? No interference. No ref bump. We had a clean tap out when Angle put Joe, or I'm I'm sorry, put Abyss in the ankle lock. Abyss submitted to him. That was the end of that. And, uh, of course, as noted, the director missed the tap out. So, yeah, this was, um, you know, two and three quarter stars maybe. Abyss was up on his feet, walking around moments later. Yes, after having his leg worked on the entire match, he just waddled him over. Mm-hmm. His his comeback involved running <laughs> with his knee out of the socket. Yeah. So then, we had a big post-match angle. Jim Mitchell appeared on the screen to talk about his son. Meanwhile, the announcers were talking over him. Always good to when you have to talk over James Mitchell. So, as promised, he said his son was going to take Abyss to hell. The lights got very dim. A blue light flooded the building. Smoke rose from the depths. A hand came out of the canvas and then pulled Abyss into the ring. You left out an important step there, which was Abyss was out of position. So the hand came out of the canvas and reached around and tried to find Abyss. Like like, like Cousin Thing from the monster, from the Adams family. And uh, Abyss knew he was supposed to be grabbed and was not being grabbed, so he looked down I saw the hand over to his right, and then kind of stuck his foot out to get, get grabbed by it. Yes. Fine television. So he got pulled into the ring. I could have sworn I saw this in about 1997. I, uh, I don't know. The last thing we heard on the show was the crowd chanting Fire Russo. 
<laughs> Fire Russo! Fire Vince Russo. Here's a list of people that need to be fired before you go to two hours. Fire Vince Russo. And kill him. Fire Dutch Mantel. Torture. Fire Jeff Jarrett. Rape him. Fire Don West. Take out his eyes. Fire Mike Tanay. Skin him alive. Fire Dave Soddy. Oh, that motherfucker. Give him to me. <laughs> Give him to me. These men need to be fired immediately. And after that, we'll have a uh, acceptable television show, I believe. That'd be pretty damn fun. You know what? Even Kip James was fine on this show. Absolutely. He was not wearing Tori Wilson's ring gear for once. He was back to his normal wacky gear. And he was completely acceptable in the Battle Royal until he was eliminated. Oh, Jimmy Rave, when you talk about him. He debuted. This was his big debut in TNA. He appeared in the Battle Royal. He did a La Mystica. And then he was eliminated. Way to go! And Don West and Mike Tanay said, oh boy, remember Jimmy Rave back in the asylum? Not really, no. <laughs> in fact, I, have, I had zero recollection he'd ever been in TNA before. I remember he'd been here. I had none. Yes, indeed. That was, uh, that was TNA.